Welcome back to Hard Run Box. Today we have some very interesting benchmarks to go through. I have in my hands the HP Envy X2, which is the very first Windows on ARM device to hit the market. That means this very tablet is not powered by an Intel or AMD x86 processor, but an ARM-based Qualcomm SoC you typically find in a smartphone. Now you might remember Microsoft's efforts to get Windows running on ARM chips way back at the launch of Windows 8, with the variant of the OS known as Windows RT. This OS and the products that ran it were some of the biggest failures in Windows history, to the embarrassment of Microsoft, and that was all down to one simple fact. You couldn't run x86 desktop apps, so you were limited to using the crappy apps found in the Windows Store. And it's really no wonder no one wanted to use Windows RT. This time around, things are different. With the new Windows on ARM devices, you can actually run desktop x86 apps through emulation which makes the whole platform actually useful. Apps in the Windows Store will still provide the best experience as most are UWP apps that natively support ARM, but if you need to run your favorite desktop apps, that should be possible in this new iteration, provided you don't run into the many limitations of Windows on ARM. For starters, only 32-bit apps can be emulated, at least for now. Programs that only have a 64-bit version will not work at all. x86 drivers of any kind are not supported, which is fine for plug-and-play peripherals with generic Windows drivers, but anything that requires a specific driver will not work unless there's an ARM64 driver available, which is pretty unlikely. The list of limitations continues. Games that use a version of OpenGL newer than 1.1 won't work. Games that use anti-cheat technology probably won't work. Apps that customize Windows may not work. Hyper-V is not supported at all for running virtualized environments. And even some ARM apps that assume you are using a phone won't work. So the question on everyone's mind with Windows on ARM is what actually does work and how well does it work? I'm going to go through some benchmarks, first exploring both emulated x86 and native ARM performance, and then discuss some more general thoughts on the platform at the end. And boy, you're in for a ride with this one. If you've seen my laptop coverage before, I tend to run a wide range of benchmarks covering many different common workloads. However, with Windows on ARM, the limitations of the platform means a chunk of these benchmarks don't work. Some didn't work as they were 64-bit only, and others didn't work for unknown reasons. Several benchmarks that I normally run also as a 64-bit app I needed to re-download as 32-bit to get working, and sometimes those still didn't work. PC Mark 8's home test, for example, works, but the creative test crashes and the work test takes so long it's pointless to run. PC Mark 10 launches, but the standard test is not supported. Cinebench R15 is 64-bit only and doesn't run. Premiere is also a 64-bit only app these days. Blender has a 32-bit version but requires OpenGL 2.1, so it doesn't work. MATLAB stopped providing a 32-bit version recently, but older x86 versions I tried didn't work. And Sandra doesn't work as I believe it needs to use an x86 driver. So that's eight benchmarks that don't work, while nine that I'd normally test with do work. So roughly half there. My experiences with real-world apps was a little better than this, you know, as key apps for me like Chrome, Photoshop, Excel, Word, Netflix, Plex, and Steam all work. But my problems with benchmarks do give you an idea of how compatibility is an issue with Windows on ARM, even though x86 emulation is supported. Let's talk performance now, because it really doesn't get better when looking at how fast x86 emulation is. The NVX2 uses a Qualcomm Snapdragon 835 SoC, which is 2017's flagship smartphone SoC packing eight cores split into two clusters. There's four Cryo 280 CPU cores clocked at 2.45 GHz, along with four Cryo 280 efficiency cores clocked at 1.9 GHz. There's also an Adreno 540 GPU clocked at 710 MHz, and both the CPU and GPU are designed in-house at Qualcomm. And of course, the SoC is fabricated at 10 nanometers. My NVX2 review unit, and it is worth mentioning this, has 8 gig of RAM, although many units include just 4 gig, and there's also a 256 gig SSD inside. So, starting off with PC Mark 8's home test, and immediately it's not good news for Windows on ARM's emulated performance. One of the cheapest and slowest Intel chips you can get in a mobile form factor, the Goldmont-based Celeron N3450, is 51% faster here. 51%. 
The Core i5 5200U from three years ago is 182% faster, while the i7 7Y75, Intel's current low power core offering, is 160% faster. That's pretty significant. And it doesn't get better in Citibench R11.5. And yes, we had to go back to R11.5 testing as there is actually a 32-bit version of that benchmark. The Snapdragon 835 is more competitive against the N3450, but the N3450 still pulls ahead by 6%. The 7Y75 more than doubles its multi-core performance. And just forget about comparing it to something like the i7-7500U or i7-8550U, it just gets obliterated. On a more concerning note, single core performance is extremely weak from the Snapdragon 835 while running emulated workloads. The N3450 doubles its single thread performance while the i7 7Y75 is more than five times faster. Yep, five times faster. Absolutely dire results for Windows on ARM emulation so far. In fact, doing any sort of rendering is very slow on the Snapdragon 835. The N3450 slaughters Windows on ARM emulation in X264 and X265 rendering. And again, the N3450 is one of the slowest Intel chips you can get. Moving on to Photoshop, and wow, I actually thought Windows on ARM emulated performance would be weak, but this is something else. The large 288 megapixel test photo we use absolutely chokes the Snapdragon 835. This is something I noticed while trying to work with several other large files and data sets. The Snapdragon 835 is simply not built for these tasks, especially while emulated. There are some benchmarks where Windows on ARM performance isn't as embarrassing. Compression and decompression is solid provided there's multi-threading with the Snapdragon 835 beating the N3450 handily in WinRAR and in 7-zip decompression. Intel's other CPUs are much faster, but hey, at least Windows on ARM gets a small win here. It's similar in the Excel Monte Carlo workload where the Snapdragon 835 is a pretty significant 62% faster than the N3450, but only marginally slower than the i5-5200U. The i7-7Y75 is still 47% faster in this test though. Any GPU related workloads, including games, tend to be the least reliable on Windows on ARM. However, some 3D Mark tests do work and the results aren't too bad for the Snapdragon 835. In the more CPU-limited CloudGate test, the 835 beats the N3450, though it does get trounced by the i7-7Y75, and the margin between the 835 and the N3450 gets larger in Skydiver as the GPU becomes the bottleneck, though again, the 7Y75 is significantly faster. So by now you will have realized that Windows on ARM performance is rather terrible if you need to emulate an x86 app. In most situations, the Snapdragon 835 can't match or even come close to the seller on N3450, while the faster Core i7 7Y75 utterly embarrasses the Qualcomm SoC. These Intel CPUs have the advantage of running x86 code natively, and boy, is that a significant advantage. However, there are some situations where you can and will be running native code on the ARM chip, so it's fair to benchmark that performance too, and see how it stacks up to roughly the same apps running on Intel's x86 CPUs, again using its own native code. The most interesting of the tests here are the browser tests. Microsoft's Edge browser runs natively on ARM and x86 processors, while Google Chrome is x86 only and needs to be emulated on ARM. Here we have a selection of devices running the Octane benchmark in both Chrome and Edge, and I've included the Google Pixel 2 XL smartphone in here as well, just to see how it all stacks up to the Snapdragon 835 running pretty decently in a phone. The results here really highlight the difference between emulated and native code. While not a like for like as Edge and Chrome use different rendering engines, Chrome performance is terrible on the NVX2 compared to Edge. In contrast, Chrome and Edge are roughly equivalent on the N3450, while Chrome is much faster on the Core i5-5200U. And yes, I'm using the old i5-5200U here, as we know the latest Kaby Lake processors will destroy the Snapdragon 835. The important thing to note here is the NVX2 trades blows with the N3450 when looking at the edge results, while the i5-5200U is just 37% faster. It's also good to see the Windows on ARM edge results matching what we saw on the smartphone side, which suggests everything is working as expected. Switch Windows on ARM to running on an emulated version of Chrome, and it gets annihilated by the Intel devices in this test. 
In Basemark Web 3.0, it's a similar situation. Using Edge gives the Snapdragon 835 a handy advantage, allowing it to beat the N3450 and come closer to the i5-5200U. Using Chrome gives the Snapdragon 835 a decent disadvantage due to emulation. Another UWP app I benchmarked was PDF Viewer Plus, one of the most popular PDF viewers in the Microsoft Store. Here, Windows on ARM was quite competitive, posting a loading time between the N3450 and i5-5200, which is decent considering a lot of the other results. At this point, you've seen all the benchmarks and all the performance numbers for the first Windows on ARM device powered by the Qualcomm Snapdragon 835. It's an interesting platform with some benefits as I'll get to in a moment, but the performance is disappointing to say the least. When looking at UWP apps that run natively on ARM, the Snapdragon 835 is typically faster than the Intel Celeron N3450 and varying degrees slower than Intel's core processors from the last few years, based on limited testing admittedly. Certainly when you put the NVX2 next to an N3450 based device, just browsing through Explorer and using Edge is noticeably faster with Windows on ARM and I think that's reflected to an extent with the benchmark results. However, it's not surprising to see the Snapdragon 835 fall behind Intel's U and Y series core processors when looking at native apps, as the Snapdragon 835 has a very low TDP, while Intel's competing chips can go as high as 15 or even 25 watts. Put more power into the equation and you're pretty likely to win when it comes to these sort of things. However, the real killer is x86 emulation performance. Being able to run x86 desktop apps is the key feature to this new Windows on ARM platform, and the reason why it's more promising than the failed Windows RT. Even ignoring the compatibility issues for a moment, x86 performance on ARM chips is terrible, which puts the whole platform into question, at least in this early iteration. When the Snapdragon 835 fails to get even close to a measly Atom-based Celeron processor in a number of workloads, you're not gonna get a good real-world experience. When you use the device with a desktop app like Excel or Photoshop, it's really easy to get frustrated by how sluggish, laggy, and unimpressive the performance is. Using a Celeron N3450 is tough enough when you're used to Core i5 or i7 performance, and the Snapdragon 835 is significantly worse than this. Now I'm sure Qualcomm or Microsoft would tell you that emulating x86 apps is meant to be a niche workload for those devices, and for the most part you should be using Edge as your browser and UWP apps from the store for everything else. And that makes sense, as the performance of emulation is so bad you won't want to use emulator apps very often. The problem there is key apps people use on a daily basis are not available through the Microsoft Store. Chrome, for example, is the most popular browser, but if you want to use it with Windows on ARM, prepare for a painful emulated experience. Now, Edge isn't terrible, but most people would agree that it's not as good as Chrome in its features or web compatibility. I actually shudder at the thought of a typical non-enthusiast user buying one of these devices because it looks good on paper, then switching from Windows 10 S to Pro so that you can run desktop apps. I should have mentioned earlier actually that uh, all Windows on ARM devices will ship running Windows 10 S by default. And then of course, using Edge to download Chrome as per usual and then getting stuck with horrendous performance. I could go on with more examples of commonly used apps not available natively on ARM, but the basic point is x86 app emulation is a key pillar to Windows on ARM and the performance really is not up to scratch in its first iteration. So at this point, you're probably wondering, why have Windows on ARM at all? Well, there is a key advantage and that's battery life. The NVX2 lasts noticeably longer than other devices out there from the limited testing I've been doing, even when using emulated apps. Qualcomm and Microsoft both said Windows on ARM battery life would be fantastic, and I've seen nothing from my time with it to suggest otherwise. Windows on ARM devices also support integrated LTE connections, you know, due to the modems in Qualcomm SOCs, but this is less of an advantage these days as some Intel powered devices also have integrated LTE. The NVX2 is also unbelievably quick at waking from sleep and processing Windows Hello facial recognition, so I guess there are some heavily optimized areas of performance too. But my final thoughts on Windows on ARM are unfortunately largely negative. Yeah, you get fantastic battery life, but in my opinion, it's not worth it when the performance you get ranges from disappointing to outright terrible. 
there aren't enough ARM optimized apps for not just enthusiasts, but typical users wanting to run Chrome and Office. And even in ARM optimized apps, you're not going to match or even get close to the performance Intel offers with their low power core processors. The final nail in the coffin is pricing. The HP NVX2 we use for testing is unfortunately a US $1,000 tablet. Battery life is fantastic at this price point, but the Snapdragon 835 struggles to outperform an Intel Celeron CPU typically found in sub $300 notebooks. So it's simply way too expensive. Other Windows and ARM devices are expected to sell for as low as $600, which is a much more appropriate price point. But even then, I don't think it offers enough value over existing Intel options. For example, right now you can purchase the entry-level Surface Pro with a Core M3 processor for just $599, down from its regular price of $799. Even with just a Core M3 processor, the Surface Pro is a much more capable device that's way cheaper than the NVX2, and it's similarly priced to other Windows on ARM devices. And if you're more after a laptop, a quick search on Amazon brings up mid-range laptops with a significantly more powerful Core i5-8250U for less than $600. This puts the first iteration of Windows on ARM in a precarious position. The price to performance ratio simply isn't there at the moment and it's compounded by compatibility issues. I could possibly see Windows on ARM becoming a solid niche option for basic users that want great battery life and are content browsing the web using Edge and running UWP apps. But devices would have to stay around $600 or ideally push even cheaper for that option to be attractive and I'm not sure the goal of Windows on ARM is to cement itself as an entry-level experience. For this platform to really succeed, I think two things need to happen. Firstly, Qualcomm and other ARM partners need to release notably faster chips at a similar level of power consumption, which sounds pretty difficult, but we do have chips like the Snapdragon 845 already in the wild. And secondly, the x86 emulation engine needs to be refined significantly with a focus on performance and 64-bit compatibility. There are some promising signs here if you look closely enough, and this platform has much better foundations than Windows RT ever did. But right now, it's hard, if not impossible, to recommend jumping in as a consumer. And that's disappointing considering the discussion around the platform when it was first announced. I will have a full review of the HP NVX2 coming up soon. And for what it's worth, HP has actually delivered a really nice piece of hardware here. It's a shame they've been let down by Qualcomm and Windows and ARM in general. But I guess that's the risk you take in launching an early adopter product. Anyway, more on that later. Give us a like if you enjoyed this Windows on ARM analysis, subscribe for more, and I'll catch you in the next one.